What is up amigos? Today we're looking at the cooling drag of cars. We'll be going through what is it, how much drag it produces, different locations of the cooling drag effectively, and different outlets for the cooling drag flow. So let's first cover what is cooling drag. So to do this, we'll just draw a the front part of a car, quite simple. And we have the front here, then the wheel, and then the rest of the car. This is the front windshield here. And we have the flow coming in this way at U infinity. So pretty much every car out there needs some amount of cooling flow. The reason why is because cars produce heat, whether that's through the engine combusting fuel, and then it gets quite hot and we need to get cooler air to cool this so we can maintain our engine at a quite a nice uh, temperature. Or if we have electric cars, they also produce heat and we need to cool that. And the way we get this um, cooling flow is through the free stream flow. So what we do is we have the engine wherever it is, let's say it's at the front here. We have the cooling flow coming in and it has to go through a radiator. So we have a radiator at the front and this has some uh, radiator fluid and it's quite hot. This flow goes over it. This is quite cool. Let's say this is 20 degrees Celsius and the radiator fluid is, I don't know, like 100 degrees Celsius is quite low, but let's just say it's that. So there's obviously a, a difference in temperature of 80 degrees. So that's going to facilitate a heat transfer. So this air coming in is obviously going to heat up and then we jettison it out through the car somewhere and then it goes on its merry way and we call the engine and the rest of the car. That is the cooling flow. Now, why do we have cooling drag? The reason is because this radiator and the general path of the flow is restricted. So when we have the flow coming in, you obviously have to go through the front part and that has like a grill and that has um, a reduction in the cross-sectional area because you have these little fins blocking off some of the area. That then results in a bit of a back pressure. So we have a drag uh, just here. Then we go to the radiator. A radiator, typical radiators are made pretty much a snaking coil like this. Then you have a bunch of fins going all the way through. The reason why we have this setup is one, the snaking line here allows us to have such a big uh, distance crammed into a small space. The second reason why, the second reason that we have these uh, fins here is to increase the surface area. The greater the surface area, the more surface area we have to cool, and this reduces how big this entire radiating just needs to be to be able to cool the flow enough so the car can operate properly. This is great for cooling, but we have such a, and blocked off cross-section here. And so instead of having just a free open space for the flow to go through, we have all this geometry here that flows to like wiggle through and that reduces the flow's velocity. That effectively gets rid of some of the energy of the flow and we have a drag production here as well. Finally, we have the flow coming out of the back of the radiator. So this is the outlet. And again, this outlet is often um, snaky a little bit. So the flow has to maneuver around before it can get out. This is also a part of drag. So we have three components right there, the front, but the inlet, the radiator itself, and the outlet. We also now have where the flow comes out. And this also affects the drag of the radiator as we'll cover in a second. First, let's cover how much drag this produces. And this is quite an interesting topic because for internal combustion engines, this is quite a lot. It's about 10% of a regular car. A regular car's drag coefficient is about, let's say, 2.5 to 0.3 right now. There are some which are a little bit lower, about 0.21. There are some which are a bit higher, 0.35, but this is about the general range. So the drag coefficient of the radiator of the cooling flow is about 0.03 or about 30 counts. These are the same things, they're just different units. So this it's nothing to blow your nose up. And for electric cars, it's actually a lot better than this because Electric cars don't really use very much cooling flow. The reason why is because they don't get too hot. And a way that you can tell this is if you go out on the street and you look at a internal combustion engine going like driving by, you look at the front part, you look at the grill, it's quite big. It takes up a lot of the front space actually. If you look at a Tesla going by, for example, you'll see there's just like this tiny little strip at the front. That's the inlet there. It's a lot smaller, which means that you're not getting as much air as for a regular car. And that means that we have a lower drag coefficient that's associated with this cooling flow. 
So electric cars ultimately have an advantage there. That is one major reason why Teslas, for example, have such a good drag coefficient. Teslas, they hover between like 0 0.2 and 0 0.23. And this is be uh, in large part because of this reduced cooling flow drag. There are other reasons as well, but this is a major part. So the cooling flow is quite a big component of the total drag of the car, 10% about. So let's talk about the different locations of this cooling flow and the different outlets and how that affects the drag. The first thing we wanna talk about is the different locations. So you can have the radio radiator at the front. You can have it down at an angle here like this so the flow comes in here. You can have the radiator up here so the flow comes in and comes down. There are different locations. And to, to be perfectly honest, there's not really much of a effect of these different locations on the drag coefficient. What's far more important is where the cooling flow goes from there. So if putting the radiator here, it means that the flow has to snake around and do whatever, that's obviously not a good idea because the more it has to snake around, the more energy it will lose, the greater the drag. Also, if you have the flow coming down and it has to just pop straight out down like this, that's not good either. And this is where we get into the different locations of the flow coming out. Let me draw another diagram here so we can uh, draw these outlet positions a bit easier. So overall, what we want is for the flow coming out to hug one of the surfaces. If we can do that, we can reduce the amount of flow separation and the possibility of flow separation. As an example, let's come back to this one here. If we have the flow coming straight down and you have flow going un under the body, you have these two flows meeting. Obviously this is gonna result in the flow coming down here and then there's gonna be a separation point before you get the flow to reattach. This region here is not good. This is wasted energy. This is drag producing right here. What's more, what happens upstream of the car will affect the downstream part, including the diffuser. The diffuser is a huge component of the car and it's very important for aerodynamics. We don't wanna mess with that. So what we wanna do actually is the flow that's coming in, let's say we have the radiator at the front and the flow comes in. We want it to come out and almost at the same angle as the flow um, coming straight up from the friction velocity. That way, both of these flows can meet and there's no jostling for position and no resulting flow separation. So that will reduce the drag as much as possible by having this outlet flow coming out like this instead of coming out straight down. Alternatively, we can have the flow going through the radiator again and then it can go up instead and we'll put, come at, we'll put it right here so it comes right just before the windshield and we want it to go at about the same angle as the windshield as well. That way the flow coming in it's gonna hit the windshield and it's gonna go up as well anyway, but this flow is gonna be going at the same angle, so it's not disturbing this windshield. It's not like it's popping straight back up. So this flow is coming here and we're getting some sort of weird thing happening, which can result in flow separation here, which will then also affect the flow going over this roof here, which we've covered in another video. And if you don't know about this, check out that video. So if we have the flow coming at this angle here, very close to the windshield, these two flows meet and they go up happily, and then they'll go around the top of the roof and hopefully stay attached that will reduce the drag of the vehicle entirely. That is how the different flows coming out affect the drag. In a nutshell, we want the flow to hug one of the surfaces. We don't want it to pop out in a weird direction in a, in a very um, dis, like, discontinuous direction. So that is the cooling drag. Let's recap what we just covered here. So the cooling drag is the drag that arises from cooling the car, as you'd expect. And this mainly comes from the radiator. So it comes from the inlet to the radiator, the radiator itself, the outlet, and then where it goes from there. The general amount of drag that the cooling flow does produce is about 30 counts, 0.03, which is about 10% of a car's total drag coefficient. Now for electric cars, this is quite a bit lower. It's maybe around, um, you can reduce this number by about 80% perhaps, because they don't need nearly as much cooling flow as an internal combustion engine. So that's quite good. What about the different locations? We can have the radiator at different locations around the car. Some common options are right at the front, at an angle, and also right at the top, just before the windshield. So they suck off air at different positions and bring it through, cool the flow, and then jettison it out. The location doesn't really make too much of a difference to the drag coefficient. A far more important thing is the point at which the flow comes out and the angle that it comes out at. 
So we want to have the flow coming out at an angle that hugs one of the surfaces quite nicely, whether that means it comes out from the bottom and hugs this underbody bit, or it comes out just before the windshield and goes over the windshield nicely. It doesn't really matter overall, as long as we have this nice streamlined flow happening. This will reduce the drag from this cooling flow as much as possible. So that's it in this video. If you liked it, make sure to like it. If you want to see other videos like this, make sure to subscribe and check out our playlist for automotive aerodynamics. And if you want to learn more about this and any other automotive aerodynamics, check out a book by Joseph Cass called Automotive Aerodynamics. I've linked it in the description below, so you can click that if you like. And if you want to check out our theory on this kind of stuff and aerodynamics in general, check the link in the description as well. And I'll see you next video. Peace out, amigos.